about what's next. I'm going to assume that most of you here are people who have worked on the Ron Paul campaign. Maybe you are someone who is actually turned on by Ron Paul. I like to think about Ron Paul as the red pull from the Matrix, right? He's, you know, that moment where you're like, oh my god, this is how the world works. It's like the scales fall from your eyes and you realize we live in a topsy-turvy world. What we've been told is not true. What you hear on Fox News or CNN or any of those places, it's all a bunch of lies. But there is a truth, and as Ron Paul says, truth is, a, truth is treason in the empire of lies. So I want to talk to you about truth. And the truth of the matter is we are screwed. You all probably work really hard on campaigns. I know, you know, I found Ron Paul back in 2007 and I did my campaigning. I was in New York at the time. I lived in Chinatown with my husband. We lived in a nice little loft in Chinatown that was right next to the train tracks. I was the only person who had Ron Paul window, you know, posters in the window because the subway train comes right by the bridge and I was like, I can reach out to people, maybe someone will know. I remember that day of excitement when I was out at Union Square and I saw one so little Ron Paul banner in a window in an apartment and I had that realization, I'm not alone and we're not alone. But, we're too dispersed. We're too all over the place. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what the Free State Project is. Because what we're trying to do is intensely unique. It's something that's never been tried before. And I actually think it is where the logical conclusion of the Red Pull goes. So if you, you know, went out, you tried to get signatures, you were like, we can make this happen. We can change politics at a national level. I want to tell you, ha, ha, ha. If you were a delegate in states like Maine or the other places where literally things were stolen from you, your hard work, your productivity was stolen from you by corruption. So the system itself is corrupt. And we can't fight, you know, I'm all about let's fight the power, but you can't fight the power at a national level. It can't be done. And Rock Paul's campaign actually proved that. We spent, you know, I spent eight years of my life dedicating myself to it, and I love Dr. Paul, and I have the world of respect for him, but I think we're fools if we think we're gonna do it at that level. So my proposal to you today is let's do it on a local level. Let's do it as a community. You know, the police state, I grew up in South Africa, so I was born in South Africa and I won a green card. That's how I moved to America almost 20 years ago now. And so I know what a police state looks like because I was raised in a police state. And my sort of come to Jesus moment was when I was in New York and I turned around a corner and there was a guy in like musty camouflage uniform, he was a police officer, he uh, had a German shepherd, he had an AR on his back, and in Chinatown. And I had that realization where I was like, you know what, this is it. We actually are facing that real police state. We see it all the time. And that's not something I want. Is that something you guys want? No? So, okay, let me tell you how we solve that problem. We solve it in New Hampshire. So the Free State is basically, it's a movement to try and get 20,000 liberty lovers, libertarians, anarchists, agorists, whatever you want to call yourself, anarcho-capitalists, whatever label you want to give yourself. I like to just say, we're all human beings. So, New Hampshire is an incredibly awesome
awesome state. I've lived all over the world, I've traveled all over the world, and I'm proud to call it my home. New Hampshire, what makes it appealing as a libertarian state? Well, first of all, there's no sales tax, which is pretty awesome, because that means we get all our business from Massachusetts, Vermont, Maine. People come in and they trade in the free market. It also has no state personal income tax. And that's really important because income tax is a form of slavery. Some areas in New Hampshire actually have zero property taxes. So one of the interesting things in New Hampshire, of course, is because we don't have some of the big ticket taxes, the money's got to come somewhere to run government. And um, so it's pretty much on property taxes. There are several state, uh, several areas in the northern part of the state that have no property taxes. So if you were to move there and buy in that area, you could actually not be paying sales tax, not be paying income tax, and also not be paying property tax. And I think that's a really interesting and awesome proposal. New Hampshire is also rated consistently the best place to live, the freest place to live. It's also, you know, there are uh, various reports that actually say when people are more free, they are happier. So I like to say New Hampshire is actually also the happiest place to live. Now I know someone's going to say, but it's so cold there. <laughs> Why is it so cold? It's so cold because, you know, well, I'm saying two things. One is, if global warming is true and Al Gore is right, which I highly doubt, but let's say he is, it's going to be pretty awesome to be there in about 10 years' time. Otherwise, you know, we do have technology and we do have heaters and all of those things. And then we also have the option, I think, as humans in the world to say, well, I can choose a place as my domicile, but I can still sit, you know, travel, I can be a sunbird, I can be up there in the summer when it's beautiful, and down here in the winter when it's warmer. But, you know, there are options. So don't let your mind close down and just say, well, I'm not going to even consider it because it's cold. It's really an idea that time has come. Of course, uh, New Hampshire's slogan is the live free or die state. It's that mentality, it's that thing I was saying at the start. Um, it's the state where Ron Paul came second in both the Republican and the Democratic primary. It's also the state where he had the highest per capita vote, so there were the most people within the state that voted for Ron Paul in New Hampshire as compared to any other state. So, you know, we were out there, it was, it was February, it was January and February, it wasn't our warm season, and we were out on the streets with our signs, we were out with our green beam, which you can see over at our booth, which is booth 119, and it's got yellow balloons, um, so stop in there. The other thing about New Hampshire, so those are sort of the plugs for, you know, the general reason why the Free State Project chose New Hampshire. But now I want to talk a little bit about why, as an activist, or as someone who is really, really, really passionate about liberty, why you might want to consider moving there. First of all, thousands of us have actually already 